Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. You all have sent us so many messages asking for an in-depth video on the deep litter method. So today that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the step-by-step -step guide that we follow for the deep litter method in our chicken coop, but I'm also gonna tell you a few variations on the steps in case they might work better for your climate depending on your climate, your bedding type, your chickens, your coop style, etc. A huge thank you goes out to Upside for sponsoring today's video. These days we're all kind of cringing at the gas pump and at the grocery store checkout line. Inflation is hitting us all where it hurts and that's where Upside comes into play. Upside is an incredible app for anybody who buys gas or buys groceries or dines out. Basically it gives you cash back or cash rewards for making the same purchases that you'd already be making in your everyday life. It's one of those things that sounds too good to be true, but I've been using it. It's a no brainer and it's totally legit. Like I mentioned before, my husband lets me use the cash back I get on Upside on extra seeds and plants in the spring so that's an easier way for me to justify those expenses next year to get started you just download the free upside app in the app store or in google play use my promo code okabode and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more you just check in at the business pay as you usually would with a credit or debit card and then you scan your receipt into the app and then they just give you cash back right in the app which you can either cash out for e-gift cards for popular places like Amazon, or you can just transfer it straight to your bank account if that's what you prefer to. Once again, download the free Upside app and use our code Okabode for $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Okay, let's dig into the deep litter method. No pun intended. Step one, you guys aren't gonna like this, but step one is to understand the basics of composting. So if you've never tried composting before, or if you've never looked into it before, it's probably a good idea just to do a little reading up first. I'll give you kind of the SparkNotes version. You don't have to be an expert, just understand the basics of composting when it comes to green matter versus brown matter. Green matter being rich in nitrogen or protein, and then carbon being rich in carbon, carbohydrates, Basically, in terms of the actual deep litter method, the chicken poop is gonna act as the green matter and then whatever bedding you're using is gonna act more as the brown matter. So that's kind of the most basic version. When it comes to composting, you just want to make sure that there is a good balance of both. I believe it's a four to one ratio. If I'm wrong on that number, I'll correct it on the screen here. I think four, uh, ratio of four to one brown matter to green matter. So again, that is an extremely basic introduction, just kind of giving you guys the keywords you can look up if you want to do more research on your own. But I do recommend having a little bit of an understanding of how composting works and just knowing those search terms before you get started. Okay, once you have a basic understanding of composting, step two, start with enough bedding. So we like to use around four inches of bedding to start with. I believe when I first started, I was actually recommended more than that. It was like four to six inches at the minimum. So we usually start with around four inches and we've had a lot of success that way. But if you're somebody who wants to play it safe, you might want to start with more like six inches. This is in contrast to more kind of traditional coop cleaning techniques where you might just kind of sprinkle enough bedding to cover the ground of, or the floor of the coop. With the deep litter method, you do want to make sure that there is a decent layer of bedding or brown matter, carbon, whatever you're using. I personally like to use fine flake shavings. So a lot of people use those thicker shavings typically. The reason I like to use the fine flake the reason I like to use the fine flake shavings is because they break down faster. So the thicker flake shavings just take a little longer to break down. And I like to encourage our deep litter system to break down as quickly uh, and as efficiently as possible. The fine flake does a really good job at that. Also, my husband does a lot of woodworking. When he's doing woodworking projects, we like to use a lot of the scrap shavings, especially from when he's planing down hardwoods and things. We just throw that in there also. So you'll see a theme here. We are not perfectionists about what we put in our bedding about a specific recipe. It's all about finding that balance. I really like the fine flake bedding as my first choice, but also making use of whatever scraps he has. The downside is sometimes the woodworking scraps can be a little bit on the dusty side, a little bit on the fine side, which isn't necessarily the best for the bird's respiratory system. So if that's something that you're gonna do, make sure you read up on kind of I guess the pitfalls or the risks of using more dusty material in their bedding. But for us, it's worked really well. And I actually 
since that stuff is finer, it breaks down even better. So um, yeah, that's something we really like doing, especially to save money on bedding too. All right, step three is to obviously add your birds, but as the birds are living in the coop with the deep litter bedding, I like to use my nose as the best gauge. So if I smell anything at all, any hint of ammonia or just yucky chicken coop smell, I add more bedding. So that's the key. Anytime I smell anything, I add more bedding either sprinkle it on top or add it in a pile if one pile is specifically bad. Then I'll throw like those grub terra chicken treats we like to use. I'll throw those in that spot so they kick it around really good, mix it around really well. The thing about chicken coops is that it should not smell. That's a really common misconception. People think chickens are stinky. If your chicken coop is stinky, it means something's wrong. It means the balance between brown matter and green matter is off. So if our chicken coop smells at all, the biggest thing that I do is throw in more of that bedding. And this is how you acquire that deep litter over time. People tend to be really used to having to scoop out bedding every week or even every few days. This is all just about creating this beautiful lasagna of chicken poop and chicken bedding over time. And as the system progresses, you form this beautiful kind of ecosystem of microorganisms that will break down the green matter and the brown matter and create this beautiful compost that kind of starts with the older material and then works its way up. Okay, step four. I think this is where there is a little more wiggle room for creative expression, if you will. But a lot of conventional wisdom says do not touch the bottom layer of the bedding, no matter what you do, that you'll disturb kind of the composting process so that you don't want to stir it up. We've done a little bit of both. So if you wanna follow kind of a lot of the conventional wisdom, you would just not touch the bottom of the bedding unless you're doing the large clean out two times a year. But like I mentioned, we've done a little bit of both where sometimes we've stirred it around a bit just to see if it worked better or not. To be honest, we haven't had necessarily one way work better than the other. It's a little confusing to me because conventional composting system would say that you want to turn it around and you want to kind of add more oxygen to help everything break down faster. So I'll be totally honest, I'm a little bit confused as to why a lot of people who have been doing the deep litter bedding method for a long time recommend not to touch the bottom layer of the bedding. So maybe it's just bad internet advice, who knows. I can tell you we've done a little bit of both and we haven't necessarily seen much of a difference either way. But if you wanna play it safe and if you're on the lazier side like I am, you can just leave the bottom layer as it is, except for when you're cleaning it out. If you guys use the deep litter method, please leave a comment below with whether you stir it or whether you leave it on the bottom layer. And I'm really curious to hear what works best for you guys. Okay, step five. This is what we do roughly two to three times a year. We do one big coop clean out. Again, roughly two to three times a year. We like to do it right before winter, and then we like to do it after winter, sometime in the spring. And then if I'm being totally honest, I do usually we get like a freak warm weather day or two in February where it's like 60 degrees and everybody's out trying to sunbathe in Wisconsin. But I like to take that day to do kind of like a really quick clean out of the chicken coop because everything's thawed and uh, that way I can buy some more time. It does build up a lot of waste during the winter for us because we do a lot of free ranging our birds most of the time. So during the winter, they spend a lot more time inside, which means they're pooping a lot more inside obviously. So. For that reason, I like to add an extra clean out during the winter if I can, but they have no problem making it all through spring, summer, and fall the rest of the year with the deep litter method because they spend a lot of time outside anyway. I know people are probably gonna ask how many chickens per how many square feet and they're gonna want some kind of recipe. This is something that you're gonna have to experiment with. So obviously the more chickens you have in comparison to the amount of bedding you have, kind of talking about that green matter to brown matter ratio again, the more chickens you have, the more brown matter you're gonna need. So that could mean that you need a bigger coop space with more bedding. It could also mean that maybe you're throwing more shavings in there every day, which you can't necessarily do uh, because eventually it'll just pile up to the ceiling, right? So you gotta kind of find that balance for yourself and your own flock. Again, I like to use my nose as the best detector, but that kind of deep clean out two to three times a year is what we do it, but you can do it however it works for you. Um, Honestly, sometimes I might clean it out more in the future because that chicken bedding is so good for the garden. <laughs> Usually it's like, you don't wanna clean out the coop because it's just another chore, but seriously, that bedding is the most wonderful fertilizer we have ever found. So sometimes I'm like chomping at the bit a little bit to get the coop cleaned out. I actually just filmed an entire video doing the coop clean out in our coop, which I will post probably next week. So if you guys wanna see kind of a beginning to end of the deep litter cleanup process, don't forget to hit subscribe because I'll probably post that next week or in the next week or two. 
But like I will talk about in that video, I like to leave a little bit of kind of the deepest layer at the bottom of the coop. I like to leave some of that in there because it actually takes a while to establish that beautiful little ecosystem with all those little microorganisms in the coop. And I, it, it helps a little bit actually if you leave some of that in there when you're doing the big clean out. So I'm more of a perfectionistic personality, so I struggle with that. I wanna get every little bit out but it's actually best if you can leave some of that in there and then throw another four inches, six inches, whatever you're doing of bedding on top of that, that might help it break down a little bit faster. Number six, I kind of already talked about this, but just make sure that the number of birds and the amount of bedding and space that you have is balanced. I won't go over that too much, but I wish I could give you a recipe. It's gonna depend on your climate. It's gonna depend on the size of your birds. It's gonna depend on the breed of your birds, what kind of feed you're using, what kind of bedding you're using, or brown matter if you're not using bedding. Maybe what we can do is get a comment thread going down below. If you guys use this method, please let us know how many chickens you have in how much space and how it works out for you. Finally, the last thing I'll talk about, number seven, is not necessarily a step, but a really important tip. Beware of moisture. So. We don't have a problem with this method 95% of the time. However, if for example, somebody gets really excited in there and tips over the great big waterer and we have a big mess there, sometimes that can cause an issue. So when that happens, if we spot it, sometimes we actually might mix up the bedding a little bit, we might spread it around. And it's funny, when I was doing that coop clean out, I'll talk about this in that next video, but there is no bad smell the entire time I was doing it, except when I hit a really wet spot where their waterer was, and it had tipped over a few times, and that ratio to green matter and brown matter, and I guess moisture is another component of that too, wasn't really all in balance, and as soon as I hit that spot and pulled it up, immediately I smelled kind of that yucky smell that you don't necessarily want. So if you're monitoring your deep litter method, just beware of moisture, because that can kind of throw things off a bit. In theory, the composting process is actually supposed to release heat and help heat the coop in the winter. I don't know how much of a difference that it has made for us in the winter. Usually the bedding, the deepest layers freeze, so maybe that's because we don't have the system all in balance as much as it could be. That being said, maybe if yours is perfectly in balance and if it's releasing heat and it's not freezing, it can create a moisture problem in the air because it's releasing that heat, it's causing condensation. So beware of moisture in the bedding, but also beware of if it's not freezing and it's releasing more moisture in the air, you might wanna check your ventilation system. You might just wanna monitor what's going on in there so that your birds don't get sick. All right, sorry the sun got so strong, guys. I thought it'd be a really pretty time to film, but uh, it ended up just being a little high maintenance. Hopefully it turned out okay. Looks like we got some tractors going over there, so I should probably head over and see if I can help out at all. Thank you for watching. Again, please leave a comment below if you've used the deep litter system or if you have specific questions about the deep litter method. It's so cool to see people answering other people's questions in the comments, so please keep it up. Thank you again to Upside for sponsoring today's video. You can download that free app in the App Store or Google Play and use our code Okabode for $5 bonus on your next purchase of $10 or more through the app. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can join us again in the future. Like I mentioned, I'm just gonna kind of do like a vlog style of how we clean out the deep litter method video for you guys next. So hopefully that's a little helpful. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.